the british in india arrival of european traders since ancient times india was famous for its spices pearls gold and silk the arab sailors who crossed the arabian sea were the first to trade with india in 1498 vasco da gama an explorer from portugal discovered a direct sea route from europe to india by sailing around africa the portuguese landed at colicut in kerala now called coricode and started trading of spices the dutch the english and the french followed and set up their own trading centers to control the trade in india and earn more profits traders started fighting amongst themselves finally the british defeated the others the british formed the english east india company in the year 1600 for trading in india they made trading centers on the western and eastern coasts they bought mainly spices and textile goods at cheaper price from india and sold them abroad at high prices british control as mughal emperor jahangir allowed the british traders to establish their trading centers in india they set up big godowns to store the goods the first center was set up in 1608 at surat followed by madras calcutta bombay and a few cities of bihar and bengal the political situation in india was very weak which gave an opportunity to the british to build forts and set up armies in their trading centers they claimed they were doing so to protect their trading centers but they were preparing themselves to establish their rule in india sirajur dola the nawab of bengal was against the building of forts around the british trading centers he insisted that the british should demolish their forts the british opposed the nawab and fought a war against him in 1757 this war was known as the battle of plassey it was fought under the leadership of robert clive the british defeated the nawab and established the british east india company in india the british disunited the indian rulers on the basis of caste and religion they adopted the policy of divide and rule and ruled over the india for the next 100 years anger among indians once the east india company had established their power in india they started exploiting the people india was a source of cheap raw materials for their factories in britain the indian farmers were forced to grow crops like indigo and cotton instead of producing food crops these crops were purchased at very low prices and sold at very high prices in england and other countries as a result the farmers suffered and became poor while the british made huge profits the milk cloth made by the british industries were sold in india this was cheaper and of better quality than the cloth made by local weavers The Indian handloom industry suffered and the workers became poorer. The Britishers also did not allow the Indians to open mills and factories. The British made unjust law to take control of more and more kingdoms. One such law was the doctrine of lapse which said that if a king died without a child, his kingdom would be taken over by the British. By introducing such unjust law and using unfair means, The British wanted to expand their hold over India but the dissatisfaction and anger of Indians led to spark of revolt Revolt of 1857 the first war of independence Before the revolt started there were several months of tension among the Indian soldiers because of the new rifle called Enfield they had to use a rumor spread that the cartridges were greased with the fat of cows and pigs This was against the religious sentiments of both Hindu and Muslim soldiers. Indian soldiers refused to use these rifles and revolted. This this sparked off a revolt which soon spread across northern India and became a mass rebellion. The revolt started at Meerut. It was joined by farmers, craftsmen and other sections of society. The soldiers declared Bahadur Shah Zafar the last Mughal emperor as their leader the revolt spread rapidly to other parts of india different leaders led the revolt in different parts of india some of the prominent leaders were nana sahib tantia tope 
Rani Lakshmi Bai and Liaquat Ali. After the revolt, the first war of independence was suppressed by the English. Many factors were responsible for its failures. 1. It did not spread to all parts of India. 2. It was not supported by all Indians. 3. Indian soldiers did not have sufficient guns and latest weapons whereas English soldiers had sufficient funds and modern weapons. The British government in Britain put an end to the East India Company and directly took charge. Queen Victoria was declared the Empress of India. Indian princes were allowed to rule over their kingdom but they were under the control of a viceroy who was appointed by the Queen. Bringing Social Changes Throughout the 1800s, the feeling of nationalism grew stronger among Indians. Modern education was introduced by the British. The educated Indians now began to demand many social and religious reforms. Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Annie Besant, Devendranath Tagore, Dayanand Saraswati and Sayyid Ahmad Khan were some of the great social leaders of that time. They spoke out against social evils such as killing female babies, child marriage, sati and caste system. They also encouraged the education of women and remarriage of widows. The Indian National Congress In 1885, Mr. A. O. Hume, a retired civil servant, with the help of educated Indians, formed the Indian National Congress. The first session was held in Bombay under the presidentship of S.H. W.C. Banerjee. The session was attended by 72 delegates. The Congress soon spread all over the country. And it became the voice of the nation. In its annual session, the Congress demanded that Indians be allowed to manage their own affairs. The most important leaders of the Congress were Dada Bhai Noroji, S.N. Banerjee, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, and Badruddin Tayabji. Their main goal was to win Swaraj or self-rule. Some teachers believed in methods of patience and persuasion, they were called as moderates. Balganga Dhartilak, Bipin Chandrapal, Lala Lajpat Rai and others were against moderate attitude, they believed that strong against the British was needed to solve their problems, they were the extremists. Balganga Dhartilak tried to draw the common people and the youth towards the struggle for freedom. He wrote against the British Raj in his paper K3. He declared freedom is my birthright and I shall have it. Partition of Bengal The feeling of nationalism was strengthening in India. This became a source of anxiety for the British and they adopted the policy of divide and rule. On 20 July 1905, the partition of Bengal was announced by Lord Gazon, the Viceroy of India at that time. One part of it would have Muslims as a majority and the other would have Hindus. The Swadeshi and Boycott Movement At a huge meeting in August 1905, it was decided to boycott British goods. It meant using goods made in India only. Students and women also joined this movement. They organized processions and did not allow people to reach shops which sold foreign goods. The British could not face this movement. They had to abolish the partition of Bengal. Revolutionaries After the partition of Bengal, several young Indians started using more violent means to fight against the British. They formed groups to fight the British and were willing to sacrifice their lives for the country. They were called the revolutionaries. This movement spread to many states of India. Important revolutionaries were Arvind Ghosh, Borun Ghosh, Khudi Ram Bose, Chandrasekhar Azad, Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, Rajguru, and Udham Singh. World War First and After World War First broke out in 1914. Many Indians helped the British government in the war. They thought that they will grant freedom to India, which did not happen. The government made strict laws and imposed taxes to recover losses they suffered in the war. In 1915, 
Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, a lawyer, returned to India after a long stay in South Africa. He showed Indians a new way of fighting injustice. He believed that there is always a peaceful way of doing things. He took over the leadership of independence movement.